that uh, Jason Tech is already playing Lion's Eye Diamond, and Lion's Eye Diamond is a very powerful enabler for Painter Serving Grindstone because it allows you to just activate Grindstone. That three mana can be used just to activate Grindstone and kill your opponent that turn. Yep. So uh, he it has, fits very nicely into what he's already trying to do. He has the potential to go turn one grindstone, turn two painter servant, play lion's eye diamond, activate, kill you. Yeah. That's something that the deck is capable of doing. So I believe we are about ready to go here. Jason is going to start off with the city of brass. Turn one, turn one city, and we're going to see a cabal therapy, and it's going to be interesting to see who he targets with this actually. Is he on five cards, or is he on six cards? I'm not totally sure if it's five or six, but the cards that he leafed through his hand, I saw two bridge from belows. Um, okay. So, uh, a pretty good... I mean, it's obviously land-heavy, but Scavenging Ooze, if he... Uh, yeah, Jason was on five cards. Scavenging Ooze, if left on check, uh, can win the game on its own, especially if uh, Bukowski's hand just isn't very good. Yeah, and he's got enough green sources of mana. He also has a wasteland here. Um, the dredge deck, I know you have the deck list in front of you, typically 16 lands, so not a ton of lands that that deck is going to yeah. work with. Four Gemstone Mine, four Colosseum, four City of Brass, uh, two uh, Dacomore Salvage, which you would hope not to play, and two copies of Undiscovered Paradise. Yeah. So Brian's going to send it over with the Mother of Runes, and that, you know, while not ideal and not great in this particular matchup, but is going to protect the scavenging use from something, uh, given the opportunity. Uh, we'll see a Hardcast Narc Amoeba. Uh. I'm taking two points to do it. Not a. He's got to get that scavengers out of his hand. Okay, he's slow down there, Brian. That. Yep. And he's drawn another land since then, so. We need action. That's another wasteland. It's not the worst draw in the world. Tag one of those. Keep him off activating Coliseum. But while he's yeah. doing this, he is also getting him, getting Jason closer to threshold. Yeah, and there's a lion's eye diamond. Lion's Eye Diamond plays very well with the uh, Cephalid Coliseum. Does. There's a Noble Hierarch for Exalted. Uh, in for two with the Mother of Runes. Uh, you'll probably see a Fetch Line this turn, or just the Savannah. I figure he may want to finish deck by a card because he's floating out rather poorly here, but... Let's see. Still waiting. Ideally, uh, Bolkowski would rather... I think Bolkowski basically wants to um, play it slow and trick Brian and thinking he is safe and basically just going... Lion's Eye Diamond, dump my hand in one turn. Oh, there's a Faithless Looting. That's I rather think. good, yeah. Two. So if there's a Dredger in here, with his Lion's Eye Diamond in the self Holy Coliseum, I expect him to start getting the ball rolling this turn. Absolutely. Especially if there's another land in his hand, too, because then he can play Lion's Eye Diamond, discard the rest of his yards, cast the Faith, flashback the Faithless Looting with the Dredgers, and then crack the Coliseum as well. Yeah. So. Looks like he's got a Salvage in there, so he has a Dredger. He especially can't afford to wait because Brian Moss's list has three copies of Scavenging Ooze on top of four Green Sun Zeniths. A lot of lists have, you know, one copy is, is, is standing in a lot of lists, some go up to two. He has three along with four Zeniths, so uh, Brian is drawing very alive here because if he finds another uh, Scavenging Ooze within, like, this turn or the next turn, it's possible that uh, Bulkowski will basically just be blocked. Yep. There's land that's an attack for four. And the reason he didn't play the Lion's Eye Diamond that turn very simply is because he did not want to get blown up by Kusali Pride Mage. No reason to expose it. Okay, uh, so we're going to dredge. One, two. There's a Golgari Grave Troll. That's going to give him threshold. Okay, and I think, I think this is the turn where you're going to start to see uh, uh, Jason start to make his move. The Grave Troll in the graveyard now represents a lot of, a lot of action yes. for his Coliseum and his uh, Faithless Looting. So he's going to activate Cephalic Coliseum first. You're first going to see a dredge of six cards. Thank you, Zealot. Narc Amoeba. No, uh, this is a big dredge. Right. Six. So we're going to bring a Narc Amoeba into play. Um, Flamekin Zealot is the most relevant of the cards. He's not going to be able to resolve that sword sword supply shares until Cephalic Coliseum is actually done resolving. Narc Amoeba doesn't actually come into play yeah. until Coliseum is done resolving as well. So he's actually never going to get priority to do that. Five, six. There's a Sun Titan. Yeah, all these Grave Trolls is just so... I mean, he's flipping over his whole graveyard, and he still has a Faithless Looting left and over an Alliance Eye Diamond. Yep. Six. He's going to discard those three Grave Trolls more than likely. Uh, he could discard Bridge and two Grave Trolls. Uh, it's up to him, really. 
doesn't matter too much because you're probably lion's eye dominating the rest sure. of your hand so away. Those, yeah, those are going to go to the graveyard regardless. Now Narcomedia comes into play. The trigger resolves. He's going to flashback of all therapy. <laughs> he has the information I would, now. I would assume he... we are going to be naming Swords of Blossom here. Yes. Yeah, so Narcomoeba triggers. Correct. And then it enters play, and correct. Volkowski has priority again. So you, that is you can't break it up with a plow. So now what's going to happen, uh, and, and I've played Dredge quite a bit, is uh, Narcomoeba is being sacked to Cabal Therapy. The bridge trigger goes on the stack. The bridge trigger resolves. Zombie comes into play. Cabal Therapy is still on the stack. So he's going to have the opportunity to kill the zombie token with a Sword of Paradise before Cabal Therapy resolves. Yep. And he's only, I mean, his hands just land, so. Yep. But you're in the clear now to do... Do your worst. I don't love the ordering there with with the Cabal Therapy. The only reason being is, is because he missed out on potentially another bridge trigger because he does have uh, Lion's Eye Diamond plus Faithless Looting. So maybe he wanted to get more bridges in the yeah. graveyard first. So from here... Do we do? Just gonna play Undiscovered Paradise, Lion's Eye Diamond. Sacking it for, I would presume, three red. Yep, discard Bridge from below and Dalcore Salvage. You're gonna see him reaching for Faithless Looting here. And we're gonna see two more dredges, and it's gonna be two dredge six. So 12 more cards going in the bin, one at a time, of course. Two, and there, we need some Five, six. The problem here is that he's already he cast one arc maybe earlier. One on turn two. Two, three, four, five, and six. So we're done for this turn? Yeah, he and he's gonna discard the he's discard those two Vulgar Grave Trolls. The problem here for Jason is he only has two Narc left in his deck. It takes three creatures to um, excuse me, flashback dread return, because he had hard cast an Archimedia on turn two. So it's gonna be difficult for him to actually amass a dread return because we have not seen any Icarids hit his graveyard. Yep. And that's because you're not going to find any Icarids in his deck list. He actually has Blood Gas for his particular deck, but we haven't seen any Blood Gas hit his graveyard either, even though he's dredged over half of his deck. And that's the reason he opted to play Undiscovered Paradise, is because it's a land that comes back to your hand, so you can keep returning those Blood Gas. So I'd expect him to tap it for mana here, right? Yeah, okay, yep. we're just going to do this. Get the Undiscovered Paradise back. See so a dredge of six. Two. Nargamiba, blood gassed. Five, six. All right. Remember when I was talking about three creatures? Yep. I think I think this is gonna do it, right? Yeah. I don't know if this is gonna end the game on the spot, but I knew. I mean, he does have at least two bridge from belows in the graveyard. We know that he has a dread from dread return in the graveyard. Um, this undiscovered paradise is going to return blood gassed, and he has the option of reanimating either either excuse me, Sun Titan, or Flamekin Zealot. And getting a whole bunch of zombies in the meantime. Correct. And he's going to be able to pay through Thalia with yeah. either one of his lands. So he's okay on that front as well. You got to think there's a better way to uh, lay out your graveyard here in terms of making this process efficient. Um, I mean, it's rather difficult. For the people who lay it all the way across, um, it's kind of inconvenient. It takes up your entire board. Um, and it's just kind of there and in the way. Um, what you do, if you play Dredge a lot, you get rather used to what cards in your graveyard and you get used to seeing them so often um, yeah. that you don't really have to thumb through your graveyard a lot. I know that it's not particularly pleasant for the people at home to see what's in his graveyard, but um, some players lay them out across, some, some players don't. So we have uh, a bunch of homies. What's Sun Titan going to get back here? Sun Titan trigger. It's going to return. Looks like, looks like it's going to be a land possibly so that he can get blood gas back as well. Um, blood gas. Okay. Oh, this is, ooh. Cephalid Coliseum is very, very good there. Does he know that? Does he have another copy of a uh, a dread return? I'm not positive he has another dread return in his graveyard, but he does have two copies of dread return in his. Because ideally, you would like deck. to just go for the kill this turn, right? Uh, ideally, you would. The the problem here is is that if he activates Cephalid Coliseum, it's going to tap him out, so dread return isn't a possibility because oh, of Oh sure, yeah. yeah, yeah. 
but with what Jason has amassed on the board at this point in time, probably um, just chill out for. A I second. mean, he, yeah, he's an absolutely no rush, and Mother Runes isn't actually going to get one of the guys through because he has a white creature and Sun Titan and black creatures. And there's in, a concession, yeah. Yeah, in, in the zombies, so he can't so, actually get through. Yeah. Brian Moss flooded out pretty heavily there. He uh, kept a hand leaning very heavily on scavenging news and just never got a chance to. Yep. We got a chance to play it. And without enough pressure to really get Jason dead, you, you know, Jason did mulligan to five. And as you said, the duck does mulligan rather well. His hand wasn't particularly good, but given enough time, it doesn't take much for Dredge to amass something to go off. Oh, you know, yeah, that's the, it, it, it mulligans the most out of any deck in the Legacy. It also mulligans the best out of any deck in Legacy. Because yes. You're, you're not playing, you're not, you're not like playing magic exactly. Uh, yeah. We do have a trivia question. I've got one right here, so we can give away. It looks to be three months of Star City Games Premium. Yep. Perfect. So, and as they cut back to us, um, we are going to be doing our traditional three-month giveaway of Star City Games Premium. Um, hopefully this question isn't too difficult for you guys, but we did have a player in the top eight have to concede to leave this evening and just drive back to Arizona. And if you are able to name, should I do the deck of the player or the player? Look at that. The player. The player? Yeah. If you're able to name the player who had to concede, unfortunately, and leave for his drive back to uh, Arizona, uh, send that to hashtag SCG Premium, and you will win three months of premium. We will select a, a winner from that. Um, so once again, the player who had to leave the top eight uh, and concede his quarterfinal match for his drive back to Arizona, if you are able to name that player, uh, send it to hashtag SCG Premium, and you will win three months of premium. Read some of Patrick Sullivan's finest articles. I mean... Well, you always do your finest work. Right, yeah, yeah. It, the, every article is tied for the best one I've ever read. That's what I thought. So right. yeah, They'll be getting their money. Sure. Okay. Good. Um, looking back, and we're going to come back to the match shortly, but looking back uh, at the sideboards really quickly, for those of you guys who just joined us, um, crop rotation of Bajuka Bog are definitely coming in here yeah. for Brian. Um, Bajuka Bog is going to be able to be searched for, not only with crop rotation, but not of the Reliquary, if he's able to get it into play on time. Mm -hmm. uh, three Fairy Macabs as well are going to be coming in for Brian. And I would assume, given the amount of graveyard hate that uh, Brian has access to, that we're going to be seeing the transformational sideboard. I'm curious to see exactly how all in he goes. He has more than, he has 12, 15, 18 creatures and only 15 cards that he can bring in to transform. So I imagine he has to keep some amount of his dredge package in. Okay. I'm not entirely sure how that works exactly, but I, I assume we're going to see it because the, uh, the graveyard hate that Brian has is significant, and he doesn't have a ton of stuff to fight through Painter Servant Grindstone. I mean, the graveyard hate that he has is rather significant. Fairy Macabre has never been especially good against dredge. Yes, it does take the the first dredger that, um, the, excuse me, the first either one or two dredgers that Jason is going to have, but dredge decks are typically able to power through that sort of thing. Um, it's the Bajuka Bog type effects, the ones that take them all out in one shot, which yep. are difficult to overcome, and he only has one of that type of effect, so it's possible that Jason feels as though he can power through the graveyard hate that Brian has. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and this is a, you know, a, this is a, I believe we'll, we'll be seeing basically the transformational sideboard at its best. And that's the thing about Dredge, why this sort of sideboard play makes sense, is Dredge is pretty much, in my opinion, it's, it's the best game one deck in the format. If you're sure. only playing game ones, uh, it's Dredge and not even close because you're playing a game that just no one has access to. It's the post-board games that become significantly more difficult. And, uh, this this sideboard just takes away a lot of the common cards, re reduces the impact significantly a lot of the common cards you would see out of most of your opponent's sideboards. Yeah, I would agree with that. Now, it's interesting, as you said, we don't really know what 15 cards he's going to board in and board out. Um, what kind of makes his plan unique is that the stretch deck does have cards that actually draw cards up and find the combo. Yes. Careful study, faithless looting, breakthrough, that sort of thing. So. Those are kind of the effects that you would have in a normal painter servant deck that you're able to take advantage of here with dredge. Yeah. Um, so that's something that does work in his favor. You can expect to see a card like Bridge from Below be boarded out. I think. Yeah, I would assume if you don't have the density of uh, if you don't have the full density of of, of dredge effects and uh, and payoffs for it. If you had to shave some of that stuff out, I think Bridge becomes the worst card. But what makes it really interesting, um, and this is something just uh, uh, something that you can kind of educate viewers on, is typically what a lot of people do, and I'm definitely guilty of this, you may be as well, is when you sideboard, you pretty ha much have an idea of what you're going to board in and out. Mm -hmm. So you take those particular six or seven cards in and out. Um, for this plan to work effectively for Jason, he's going to have to shuffle all 15 cards in. 
Yeah, because it's possible he doesn't even bring in the combo at all against some opponents. Um, but you had to keep them honest, right? Like, yeah, absolutely. I mean, for this plan to work, especially when Brian has the information that this exists, Jason has to sideboard all 15 cards in, shuffle his deck, and then decide what 15 cards he's going to board out so, he, right. so that Brian doesn't have a good idea of what he's going to be up to. For sure, yeah. So, Obviously, the value of the plan goes down a little bit with full information, but I still feel uh, like it has the potential to be very good here. Sure. I, I don't disagree with you at all. I mean, if he goes on this plan, we're looking at three Kosali Prime Mages and four Green Suns, and this is really the only way to effectively break it up. I mean, Thalia is definitely good at, against this sort of plan. Thalia... Tr truthfully is good against both halves of his deck. Yes. It's going to be good no matter what. Um, but I think that the way that Brian is going to have to sideboard, he's going to have to dilute his deck with some graveyard hate cards, and then that may be completely ignored by Jason. Right. So, we shall see. We shall see. We shall see. Mm-hmm. I'm interested to see. I mean, we're going to know right away from his opening hand, I would assume, which way he's leaning. Yeah. I have a feeling we're going to get a little bit of both. I saw at least one unmasked. Yeah, there's an unmask. That's a, that's a key from both ends. Mobile Hierarch is in play. It's a salvage. What is a dog more savage? We're going to see we're an unmask. unmask. And we're pitching Stinkweed. Stink so we have some amount of dredging still going on. No, unmask, this is a card you're probably familiar with. Is this a discard or is this a remove from the game? Um, RFG. RFG, okay. Oh. That's a stinker. That's a stinker. Gut shot, fairy macabre, three lands. Do you think gut shot's just in there to break up bridges or something? Yeah, I think that's what that's what it would be there for. Yeah. Strew a plow. Sorts of yeah, and his his hand. Even if he got to keep the fairy macabre, his hand would have no action against the painter servant grindstone combo. Yeah, I mean he did just draw he did just draw swords of Parad or swords of postures, excuse me, which is actually relatively good. Uh, against breaking up the combo, but his hand is just going to give Brian, as he draws another unmask and a and a faithless leading, It's just going to give Jason way too much time yep. uh, to get things set up. Discarding blood gas, discarding unmask, passing. Going to break the fetch line because it's got pretty much all the mana he can use at this point. Be, be interesting to see if. Um, Brian opts to use his Fairy Macabre on just the Bloodgast, assuming that there's a trigger next turn. Oh no, that got tagged. That was what got selected with Unmasked. Okay, that's what got selected. Okay, thank yeah. you. Sure about that? I see a Faithless Looting. I, I see it one in his hand. Yeah. See what? One what? I see a Fairy Macabre in his hand. I see a black card. Yeah. Oh, okay. So what did he, he must have taken? Oh, he, he took the Gut Shot. That's right. Shot. Okay. There's a Faithless Looting. He did play a land for us, and he did not return Bloodgast. Not sure why he wouldn't return the Bloodgast unless he was afraid about... Like, he didn't want to just get his guy plowed, like he's trying to set up some turn. But. Sure. It's going to be seven cards in the graveyard right now. And you're going to see Brian sacrifice in a turn. Um, to get a most likely Savannah out of his deck, no fear yep. of wasteland here mm -hmm. whatsoever. Yeah, this is a little this is a little awkward. Uh, Wilkowski's a little jammed up on colored mana because he needs to cast Enlightened Tutor and uh, presumably will need to cast Enlightened Tutor at some point, and has Temple Coliseum and has Faithless Looting, so his colored mana is really taxed right now. He's only got the one Gemstone mine. Yeah, and that Gemstone mine, as you, as you know, only has three counters on it, so you can't. Use it willy nilly every time. Every activation is rather important. Yeah. Mother of Runes adding to what is a rather slow clock. And you still got that plow up. I mean, I see a grindstone in his hand and a lion's eye diamond. I'm happy to just pass back. So I'm not, I'm not sure if he's going to enlighten tutor for the other part of the combo right now, or what we're gonna, what's going on here. If he's happy to wait because Ryan's not really putting him under any pressure. Wasteland's good here. This line is good. I think I would have went after that gemstone, but I think, but I, I mean, Brian has the information. It seems like he is. Uh, it seems I like we know what he's it. up to. Two, three. He did draw City of Brass. That'll help his colored mana. Yeah, issues. yeah. City of Brass is a big draw there. Yeah, 
I mean, if you're Brian right now, you're dying to draw either Zenith or a Knight of Reliquary. Oh, I yeah. Feel. You just want to wasteland the heck out of him. I mean, I don't think scavenge, scavenging is, is bad here, of course, but I think the Knight of the Reliquary is better, especially because of Pajuka Bog as well. But another copy of... Yeah, I'm trying to see his hand here. We got Grindstone. Right okay. there it is. Another Mother of Runes. Yeah, Brian Straws has just been pretty anemic. I mean, he has... He's, he's drawn some sideboard cards. It's just... Uh, Sort of weirdly reactive, not super helpful. So I think we're, are we gonna enlighten Tutor here for the other part of the combo? Yep. Now what's interesting, um, Swords of Paradise, Swords, Swords of Plowshares, I keep calling Swords of Paradise. Swords of Plowshares is going to be able to break this up. Um, Painter Servant's gonna go on top. He does have Painter Servant and LED uh, in his hand. Um, he can rather easily just play Painter Servant, play LED first. Then play Painter Server and, and say, just sit. Go. Yeah, and yeah. just sit. Oddly enough, Painter Servant holds off. It's a 1 3, right? It just holds off his whole team right now? Yeah. I'm curious to see if he's going to go for it if he's happy to sit. I think you got to be happy to sit, right? Because you can. He's got another grindstone in his hand. With one more mana, he can go over to the top. Yeah. Well, he can't activate it twice in one turn. It, it, it takes a tap to activate it. All right. It looks like he's gonna go for it. Yeah. Activate this. One assumes we're gonna see a plow in response. I would like to think so. Right. Okay, there's your plow. Sure. That was actually RFG'd. Yeah, that painter servant's gonna be RFG'd. You guys can let them let them know that over there. Two. What was the light card that just got flipped? It looked like a pro promo path to exile. Okay. Yeah, I would have been much more content just to sit there. Personally. Yeah, I mean, it, it, he can't, actually can't attack you. I like mean, you're not in any, you're not in any rush. His right? attacks aren't particularly good because um, I mean, what Painter Servant does it makes everything a certain color. So he's gonna have to act, he's going to have to activate Mother of Runes oh, okay, to get yeah, his guy he through. So through, right. he can get through for two points of damage, but it's not like he's under any significant pressure right. to do anything in particular. Fairy Macabre. It's gonna remove Blood Gas and Faithless Looting. Okay. A draw of Enlightened Tutor or or Painter Servant is relatively good here once again. He just passes back. That looks like a draw of gut shot number yeah. two. Another gut shot. City of Brass is Jason's draw step. He passes back. Another noble hierarch is going to add another point to the clock. Yep. We'll have to see what he can draw. Umujawa's Jit is... Sure. Umujawa's Jit is actually very, very good that turn. It's going to put two counters on that, and then the third damage he needs to deal to Painter Servant will be will be provided by Gutshot. Yeah. So it's actually one of the better draws, even though it looks very bad right now. And that's going to send it over to game three. Yeah, I think I think Bukowski could have waited. I mean, there was a couple turn window there that he didn't know about. Um, there's another argument that, like, once you are on that plan, that you don't want to just fire off your own masks on turn one. Yes. You want to be holding them for the time where you're actually going to zoom and be killing someone. Yes. Because, you know, Jason was, you know, on that turn where he has, where he had the, the whole combo set up, he was working with incomplete information about whether or not uh, Brian had a plow. Yep. So, uh, and the card he ended up getting off of his own mask on the first turn was a, a really marginal card. He got a gut shot, which didn't matter for anything. Yeah. You know, so if he waits, uh, if he can sit a little more patiently on his uh, on his own mask. Now maybe there's other cards he's worried about that he wants to knock out of his hand. But if he can afford to be a little more patient with his own mask, then uh, he can just make sure the coast is clear, get the one relevant piece of disruption he has on that turn, and then uh, just go off. I think if I'm Jason, um, I go back to my original game plan. It just felt to me uh, what he was doing that game was re relatively erratic. 
Also, I mean, something as simple as a Swords of Paradise, Swords to Plowshares, uh, Path to Exile, or Kosali Pride Mage is very easily going to be able to break this up. Yeah. It's, I mean, he's not going to be boarding out Kosali Pride Mage no matter what, because it's 2 mana 2 2 and has Exalted. So that's going to stay in the deck and be able to break up the combo at any point. Uh, he's already proven to me that he's going to leave Swords and, and board in Path, uh, even though he already has one main deck. So, I mean, he has five copies of that sort of an effect. He also boarded in Gutshot. So. I just don't think that that is a way that's going to get him to win. When, obviously, it works so much better when they don't know that you have it. But because they have deck list, I think that... And he, and Jason has shown that he's willing to board in this game. I would board it back out and just try to power through. Yeah, another another huge issue is that, uh, uh, at least in my mind, I think that the conventional dredge plan, his game one setup, is much better on the play. Part of the, the reason that you would want to be in the Painter Servant plan on the draw is because... Um, Knight of the Reliquary into Bajuka Bog is something Brian probably has the time to set up on the play, but is way less likely to have time for on the draw. Sure. So you know, uh, the value of his uh, the value of his Bajuka Bog goes way down uh, when he's on the draw, and so your natural setup might be able to just win the game. I mean, truthfully, I think that Dredge is the sort of deck that yes, it is susceptible to hate cards, but of the hate cards that are available to play against Dredge, one of the easier ones to beat is Fairy Macon. Yeah, I know. I mean, you had to be... You had to be definitely coupling it with, with pressure for it to be meaningful. Fairy Macabre is more of an anti... In my opinion, more of an anti-reanimator card. I agree, 100%. Because it's better, you know, it hits a reanimation target in response, and it's uncounterable, and the reanimate deck is, you know, obviously playing Force of Wills and, and whatever else. So mm -hmm. an uncounterable, targetable sorts of... Graveyard Disruption is pretty much perfect. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, I'm in this... I, the way that I look at the situation is, you know, Dredge is a deck that goes off on turn one or turn two. Um, that's going to be before Knight of the Reliquary can actually s get active and search for that Bajuka Bog. And, excuse me, it goes off on turn two or turn three when yeah. you're on the play. So it's going to be ahead of Knight of, the Knight of the Reliquary searching for Bajuka Bog. If he draws his one of crop rotation for Bajuka Bog, good beats. It wasn't my game. I'm willing to bet, based on the excited reaction from the peanut gallery I over here, I just overheard that uh, Josh Rutan and his Tribe Alter deck, uh, yeah, and we just got confirmation here. Uh, Josh Rutan and his Tribe Alter deck uh, just won two games to zero over uh, Andreas Johnson's uh, Esper Stoneblade deck, so we can pencil in Josh, and he'll be uh, playing against uh, Vidi and Jaya in the semifinals momentarily. Two friends. Two friends. Two frenemies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once friends, now frenemies. That's right. And we'll get an update on the uh, on the Moreno uh, Falic Farsa match momentarily. Absolutely. So we'll see what's going to happen here. Um, I know that Jason went back to the sideboard. Um, not really sure which way he's going to lean. To me, I to me once again, uh, just harping on the point. You know, I think that the sideboard plan that he has is actually very, very good. Yeah. Like if I were to go to a Grand Prix that is legacy and bring that sideboard and just no one knows that it's coming it seems insanely powerful at that point but when someone has their deck list in front of me and they're like oh i see what's going on here i can kind of hedge against everything now it just seems a little bit less powerful and dredge is more than powerful enough to power through hate right especially like the you know it's not it's not ley line of the void it's not you know the it's not graph digger stage not yeah. the horrible stuff it's just reasonable anti-graveyard cards yeah absolutely it's very clear that Brian, when building his deck, was more concerned with Reanimator, which is why he's playing Fairy Macabre, yes. than people playing Dredge. And with that in mind, as a Dredge player, you, you should be able to power through that hey, if you're proficient enough with your deck. Yep. So uh, our other, J our other uh, Dredge player, Joseph Moreno, is apparently up a game on uh, Gallon, Phallic Farsa, and his uh, Rogue Delver deck. Mulligan, Mulligan. Yep. Can't act too surprised, Jason. That's what your deck does. Yeah, that's that's part of what you sign up for when you yeah. choose to play Dredge. Another interesting point uh, that I will bring up is we know that this deck mulligans a lot. Oh, yeah. Um, just because of how many lands it plays, uh, what it's trying to accomplish. It does mulligan well. I'm willing to bet that it does not mulligan very well when it is in its sideboarded plan. Oh, no, no. Definitely definitely has to get worse, right? Yes. Every there's mulligan you take with that is ugh. Especially since you have so many... You have a lot of... Uh, uh, Two for ones against yourself, an enlightened tutor and uh, unmask. Yeah, definitely can compound the problem. So it looks like it's at least a mulligan to six. I'm not sure if it's a six or a five, but we're at the very least going to six. Man, 
I really hope that if the finals of this tournament is Dredge versus Char Belcher that Richard Garfield isn't watching. <laughs> <laughs> I would not want him to know what was going on with this beautiful game. Yeah, not magic versus not magic. <laughs> this is not my beautiful house. This is not, not my beautiful, beautiful. home. Yeah. It's, uh, where are, the, where are their lands and their spells? Yeah, what are they doing? <laughs> no, are we're not, are we're there any creatures? The are they attacking? No. I'm very confused. All right, at least after a lot of contemplation that Brian Moss also took a mulligan there. Deep in the tank. You know, um, Jason Bulkowski and uh, Joe Lawsett play a lot together. Oh, do they? Yeah. Okay. So this is probably a more familiar face for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jason, I know. All right, Dredge 1 2 0. So we that got. second game was quick. All right, so we got. We can pencil in uh, Dredge here, waiting for the winner of uh, this semifinal match. I think that we'll do. You know, if uh, Jason is able to win this game, I think we'll do everyone a service and, and push off the Dredge mirror away from the camera. I think uh, we'll probably have uh, uh, Josh and VD play, I would, I would assume. Belcher v. Stoneblade. Yeah, feels like a good matchup for Belcher. I was talking about this the other day. You think so? Yeah, uh, yeah, I think so. The the Stoneblade deck just has a lot of trash in it. I, I mean, obviously, that. among the Force of Will decks, I think it is one of the easier Force of Will decks for Char Belcher to beat. Sure, most of what that deck is doing is irrelevant. Yes. Um, especially what Char Belcher is looking to accomplish. I mean, it depends on how many engineer explosives that are in VD's deck list and that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, if it's it, it's basically you get to the point of it's force of will or no. He's got two two explosives, four force of wills, two spell pierces, one counter spell. Counter spell's too slow. That's pretty much it. In his sideboard, he has stuff that isn't highly relevant: a blue elemental bast, two spell snares, which are actually okay, uh, two inquisitions, which are okay. But I mean, inquisition takes all of your redundant cards, which are all the rituals. You can take burning witch as well, but it doesn't take empty the warrens or goblin char belcher, which are your most important cards. Yeah. Yeah, I would say I would agree with you. Of all the of all the decks that you can play against, uh, that is leaning heavily on Forceful. This one does just the most. Who cares? Yeah. Of anything. The most garbage. Yeah. The sad and, thing. Is, and Josh just I I it looked like Josh just sawed through some. Uh, yes. Esper Stoneblade deck two seconds ago. Some poor chap <laughs> with his batter skulls and his Stoneforge Mystics. The player said they are testing our ability to fill dead airspace. Oh, challenge accepted. I can talk about myself all day. Yeah, that's not even hard. Yeah. I'm great yeah. looking, I'm yeah. in shape, and I'm single. <laughs> we can talk about anything about me if you want. I don't yeah. care. We could just treat this as an extension of your OKCupid okay profile. You that sure is can. Not, that is not hard for us to do at all. I like music. I like the sports. Long walks on the beach. Yep. Cooking. Hamburgers. Hot dogs. Do you actually like to cook? I love cooking. Okay. Absolutely. I like Top Chef. You guys just tell me you want me to stop. I like Top Chef. I like the Mets. I like the Brooklyn Nets. I like the New York Jets. <laughs> All right, so are both players on five cards? I mean, we got some mulligans. Ooh, more dead air. Patrick, what do you like? What do I like? What don't you like? I have a, I have a pretty wide range of interests. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm very into game design, both... Uh, Applying it myself and sort of the philosophy behind it, I think it's still an, an industry and a, an artistic endeavor that's still in its early stages. Like okay. what we are learning about game design, we are still in its infancy. So sure. it's created a space that's uh, you know still we're still discovering, which to me is really compelling. Obviously, I'm a huge NBA fan. Um, ticket season ticket holder for the Los Angeles Clippers. Sure. Uh, and just a huge junkie for the sport in general. Understood. You and you and I both. Uh, I love New Jersey. I'm from there, and I miss it tremendously. If I could get a job back in New Jersey doing what I do in California, I'd be on the first flight to Newark. Wow. Yes. Wow. No one loves New Jersey. That's not true. Have you watched How I Met Your Mother? Uh, Bruce Springsteen loves New Jersey. Um, what's his name? Someone else really famous. Another mulligan. Down to four for Brian Moss. He just shrugs his shoulders. No big deal. Yeah, whatever. It's the same thing. We're accepting your challenge, Brian. It's no big deal. Well, Bruce Springsteen. Oh, Kevin Smith. Kevin Smith was obviously a huge New Jersey fan. Sure. He's nobody. Uh, really? Yeah, he's nobody in my world. What's your world? You don't want to know. Okay. 
It's not fit. It's not fit for print. What? Where? Who are your favorite musical acts? My favorite musical acts? Good God, Avril Lavigne, Britney Spears, <laughs> Christina Aguilera. That's right. Should I keep Maroon Five? Okay. Get a little nasty with Eminem. <laughs> I can switch it up if you want. I can go into Kanye West, Jay Z. I'm not above Kelly Clarkson. No mm -hmm. one is though. No, that's no true. No one is. I try. I try to hate on her for a while, but it's just there's everyone. No point. Tr everyone yeah. tries. It's yeah. fine. She's gorgeous and she can sing. What more do you want in life? It's she not... probably cook too. <laughs> Bet she makes a mean dish of anything. Yeah. What don't I like? I, I love man. I'm deep. Yeah. I listen to the pop music, rap, rock. What's your favorite rap artist? Go. Nas. He has a new CD out. Yeah, it's hot. Is it good? He's my favorite is it, solo. It's hot. What does that mean? It's my. He's my favorite solo rapper. Uh, Wu Tang Clan is my favorite rap group. Blacker than me. Cephalocostium number two. <laughs> Jason Volkowski. Uh, and and we've, we've seen we've seen this before. Oh yeah. The Narcomiba beatdowns. Yep. So we have a combined nine cards between our starting two hands. <laughs> This is pathetic. This is how magic was meant to be played. Somebody yeah. call Garfield. You want to talk yeah. about magic. All right. Does he have an ooze? No, he has a pride mage. Beatdowns. Three is more than one. That's, that is the math. Graduated college. Whoa. Representing a dark blast? Can't stop, won't stop. Just don't, or just don't care? The Stone Cold <laughs> don't cares? <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? It flies. Oh, it flies. Oh, oh come okay. on. I don't know. I've never seen anyone attack with the Narcomy before. I've only seen it sat to a cabal therapy. You haven't seen me go to work with Dredge. I'll teach you a thing or two. Uh-oh, I think we're, uh... Oh, boy. Here we go. Faithless looting. All right, he's gonna... Taste it. Oh, boy. Perry McCobb's actually pretty good there. That's, yeah, that's, that's pretty insane. insane. Kind of unfortunate. Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> I don't know. Is that, the, is that the Price is Right song? It, <laughs> it's like right below a dollar. Ooh, a nickel. A nickel. <laughs> yeah. Jason's, it, Jason's in some trouble now. Well, it's not good. It's not, it's it's not, not, it's not good. good. Listen. This is a cripple fight. We could have a little fun with this. Yeah. Listen, if there's anything I love to watch, it, there's nothing in Magic I like watching more than. Dredge just get humiliated. <laughs> it is by far my favorite thing to watch in Magic. You deserve this for all the for all you put your opponents through today. This is a fitting yeah, end for destroying them on turn two every game to make it here. Yeah, this is a fitting end. We see a Zenith for two. I think we're ooze ooze the boss. <laughs> ooze the ooze the man. Who's your daddy? I'll show you who. All right, good luck. Hello I, and hello and good luck. Do you know the other card in his hand? Because I do. What is it? It's a singleton. Take a guess. Bajukabog. Close. Uh, Very close. Searches for it. Night of the Reliquary? Crop rotation. Oh, Come crop. on. Okay. I said it was a singleton. I think this guy's playing one. Maybe that's all he owns. I have a deck list in front of me. Yeah, it's not in front of me. You win again. <laughs> Eight nothing faster <Patrick laughs> on the weekend. Just pitching a shutout. <laughs> So, all, right. all, ki all kidding aside, uh, we have Brian fairly ahead in this game. Yeah, I mean, this is this is getting... Jason is struggling on the, uh, on Brian's mold of four, simply because of Fairy Macabre, and he yeah. wasn't able to power through it. It was very well-timed, um, because he would have been able to do some rather disgusting yeah. things if that had resolved. Yeah, he's, yeah, definitely would have been able to get the ball rolling, but now there's no hope of getting to the threshold with the Cephalocalciums. He can't really get any sort of graveyard engine. Ooh, we can hard cast the... Uh, we can hard cast our own mask. It's not the worst. Yeah. I mean, it's not good. It's not, it's not good. <laughs> it's not good. But it, it's an option. Yeah. This is this scavenging use has two counters on it as well, so it's a four four. Yep. Pride Mage is a two two, and then Dried Arbor is a one one. So if the light tools are correct and Jason is at seven, then this game looks to be over. Yeah. I don't want to pronounce anyone dead because that's what doctors do, not people. But. Alright. So, Maverick. Um, you're, just been, you're penciling, you're penciling, penciling it in on the already. bracket, yeah. <laughs> You've chastised me for doing that all weekend. 
All right, Narc Amoeba, little trade. Gonna get eaten by old scavenging ooze momentarily. Game is uglier than a masterpiece sneaker. I, that's probably true. <laughs> that's, yeah. Oh, but he, wait. Bridge from below for the draw step. That could, right. that changes everything. I mean, if I were, uh, if I had another black man, I'd probably just, I would just cast it for Val. Yeah, I've cast it before. I actually have. And that's there it good. is. Congratulations to Brian Moss. <laughs> Winner 2 1 over Jason Bulkowski and Dredge on a multi four. Yep. All it takes is an ooze. Yeah, ooze your daddy? Yeah, I am. Ooze in a clot. Ooze plus very macabre was enough to uh, just let him beat him to death. I thought he would be able to power through. And he almost did, actually. It, it, obviously, if he didn't have the macabre, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. He would have been fine. He would have, I mean, he would have he, gotten the Fatalist looting and had Cephalic Coliseum. He would have gotten a yeah, lot and, of action. And going. one of the cards he discarded was Stinkweed him. So he actually would have dredged five. Yeah. And the other card is six. And then if he gets another dredger, then he can activate Coliseum. He has another. Uh, LED in play. He can actually just go stone crazy. Right. If like anything breaks his way like just a little bit. 